Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at conditional notifications. This is a newer option that you have in the tools. Now, one thing to note is that this is only for workspace and it doesn't seem like there's a plan to roll it out for all the all accounts. So if you don't have a paid workspace like Google Workspace or Google for Education, probably will not see this conditional notification. So I guess I don't want to get anyone too excited about this if it's not uh, applicable to you. If you don't have it, your email can get notifications for it. You just can't set up the rules and you just won't have options to adjust rules if someone gave you one that had conditional notifications with it. So to get started, you push conditional notifications. Of course, there's links, and I'll make sure to include the links in the description on to learn more about different options there. So here you can add a rule, and let's just call this rule um, assign tickets. So what you can do is if a cell value changes, and it doesn't have to be the exact one, if, if for some reason you want something else to be the condition, I do in this case want it to be the status, so G, and the condition is that the text contains assigned. So in the statuses, what I want it to happen is if it goes to assigned, then whomever the technician is to send that technician an email. Now, you can add more conditions too if you want, like this has to be, you know, not empty. Again, if it's not empty, that's not going to make a difference because there wouldn't be anything to send an email to. But again, it's there. The next thing is you can either type out emails if you want it to always go to the same person, or you can select a column. So in this case, the column with the email will be column D. So you push save. Now I have assigned tickets here. Now. What happens is if I switch one of these, it will send an email to this column. One thing I have noticed is it takes a little bit of time and it almost seems like if you're doing a lot of things, so if you're like changing multiple ones, like if you're doing assigned, 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 or kind of clicking around, it takes more time. Even on the website, and you can again go to the link if you want, it says that it could take up to five, 10 or so minutes. It is a newer function and hopefully it'll get faster, but it does give you that option to be able to send a notification. So hopefully by now, let's go check. It has not sent yet. So let me just hang out here. Let's... All right. Hi again. So it took a little bit longer and I actually had to go back, edit it, and I, I switched it to assign, like basically switch this to text contain assign and then put back assigned and then it started working. Again, it's a little bit finicky where like everything was, it's the same thing, but it just took a bit. So in any case, as you do these and you assign them, when you go to the, the trigger history, then you can see when they work. So here's that first time and then the second time, successful. And now there should be a third one coming up soon. Unless, of course, now it stops working. But it does take a little bit of time, as I said. So there we go. So yeah, I mean, about every minute or 30 seconds or so, it seems that the trigger eventually goes through. And just because it's there doesn't mean that an email gets sent at that time. It does take like I've noticed five, 10 or so minutes. So just a heads up on that. So as I said earlier, if you don't have a workspace account, you can still get emails from this. So I'm just gonna paste in this one that does not have the workspace account, whereas this one does, and then do a sign. And so that should send the email to this one. I did notice too that if you have just a regular email and you push assigned, it doesn't work, it has to be the chip. So just keep that in mind as well. I really should have prefaced this whole video with it's honestly a little bit finicky. And so 
you know, kind of the unfortunate things that are one, sometimes the triggers should work and they don't, and you have to just kind of mess with it until it does. Once when it does start working, it seems like it does consistently, at least for my testing. But again, I like in this one, the assigned, it it wasn't working for a bit. I deleted some of that and then re-added it and then it started working again. So again, if it's the people chip, it works, but if it's just an email, it does not um, from what I've seen. So, you know, as we go through, we can see and test if the number seven works in the trigger history. You can see here that there's this extra one that's the receipt is successful recipient. And so now it's just a matter of waiting that time until, and you know, checking the inbox. So as long as it's not something that you need an immediate answer to response to send, this could be something that's helpful. Now, the other thing too, with these trigger histories, if you're wanting something kind of simple, but you know, just if something changes, you can actually make that if something changes at all in, you know, column E. So anytime there's something there, you can send an email and you can just paste in an email and call this one issue change. So that means anytime that there's some data that gets added here, then you're going to get, you know, information on it. And maybe there's some rules someone else made that you don't want. And you can go up to the tools, notification settings, and you can edit the notifications. So you can choose the conditional notifications and all or none. And so that's something that can be helpful. The other thing I noticed too is that if the recipient is not in the specific spreadsheet, they can still get an email about a change, but they don't have access to actually see what the change is. So you could have it be sent to someone without being added to the spreadsheet, without being able to see that, to see that there's a change. I don't really see an application to that, but again, there might be some places where you would want that, you know, knowing that someone was working on the spreadsheet or something like that. So let's go here now that we have the issue change. So anytime an issue added here and you press that, this should enable a trigger and just send to that manually entered email. So if I look at the trigger history, don't have it yet. Let's just give it a second. So let's take a look again. Okay, issue change. So here we have the recipient. I'll go ahead and show what you'll see in the email. So I'll switch over to my Google account to show you that email that you get. So here's the important value change here. You can see that there is a change. So essentially we're getting two updates in the one email and you know, this is, I'm going to probably be getting some more emails shortly. That's essentially what they look like. It'll show who sent it, what it was before and after, and so on. And again, this was about 10 minutes or so, 10, 15. And so I'm going to probably get some more notifications too. I did at one point put in an email that didn't have access to it. And so here with the sheets automation, no reply, it'll just say a spreadsheet and some values changed and gave me an, an email, but I wasn't able to check it. So this is kind of what it would look like if you, you know, have your email added to one and then the conditional format happened. So it's again, not super useful in there, but if someone says like, this is all I'm getting, what you need to do is add that user to it, at least a view to be able to see what the changes were. So again, as I kind of have looked at this and have used it a little bit, it takes a little bit more time. Like it just, it's a little bit finicky setting it up. It's fairly slow to actually get the trigger history to go through and to send the email and then to actually get the email to take some time. And so it feels a bit sluggish. That said, it's a very interesting new feature and I hope it gets better with time. So if you're just trying it out here, know that there, at least I, from experience, saw a lot of different things not working as I hoped it would or just took a bit, but 
hopefully as time goes on and people use it and it gets updated, we'll see a lot more functionality with this. So it is super helpful to be able to, like, instead of saying, like, I just changed something, can you work on this to a team member, that you can set up a conditional notification with them. So, you know, I could see some different triggers being added or things like that. But again, it's kind of dependent on what your flow already is and could potentially reduce one or two or, you know, a few points of communication and have it be a little bit more automated. So hopefully you find this video helpful. As always, do those YouTube things like share, subscribe, leave a comment, whatever you want. See you in the next one.